Okay, so this is the first question from June 2013 exam on nuclear physics. So let's get started. So nice and easy to start with, simple definitions question, define the atomic mass unit. So obviously the atomic mass unit is one twelfth of the mass of a carbon. 12 atom. It's important to make sure you're saying that it's a carbon 12 atom because obviously carbon, when we're using carbon dating, is carbon 14, so specify clearly it's carbon 12 that you are using. Okay, so the next question says state and explain how the mass of a helium nucleus is different from the total mass of its protons and neutrons when separated. Okay, so the thing to think about here is that when you're trying to break apart a nucleus you have to put energy in obviously to try, so to try and overcome the strong force that's binding together. So if you have to put energy in to break it apart that must mean that when it formed you got energy out of it. So if you're getting energy out of it, you must have lost some mass for it to be turned into energy. So you'd expect that the separate nucleons, so obviously protons and neutrons are both nucleons, will have greater mass. Okay, so we've done the state part of the question. So now to explain, to get the second mark, what you need to say is that you can, that obviously energy is required to separate the nucleons, or you could also say conversely that you actually you release energy when the nucleus is formed, so then obviously that energy must have come from mass, so you must lose or transfer some of that mass into energy, so you get a larger mass when they were separated. Okay, so the next question says, explain why nuclei in a star have to be at high temperature for fusion to take place. Now the key thing to remember here is that fusion can take place once the, the strong nuclear force is able to act on it. Okay, so the key thing is fusion needs strong nuclear force. Okay, so that's a key thing. Needs strong nuclear force. To now, the thing is, the range of strong, I'm just going to abbreviate to SN, to strong nuclear force, is approximately 0.5 femtometers. So that means that your nuclei need to be close together. Okay. So that's an important point because if you want this strong nuclear force to act on them, they need to be close together. So we have to think, well, what's the other force acting on them? So considering the force that's acting in the opposite direction, what we need to think is that if you're trying to fuse two nuclei together, nuclei contain protons, which means that nuclei are charged. So obviously we know that charged particles undergo the electro magnetic interaction. And obviously if 
Obviously both of these things contain protons, so they're both positively charged. So that must mean it's a repulsive force. And obviously the thing with the electromagnetic interaction is it has infinite range. So if you're trying to move two nuclei close together, because the electromagnetic has a bigger range, that's always going to be the dominant force because it's going to have an effect long before the strong nuclear force can start to pull them together. So all you get is, without injecting any energy into the system, you're always going to have this electromagnetic interaction but stopping anything happening, which is why in the question it tells you that the star would have to be at a high temperature, because what being at a high temperature does is that it actually allows you to change the energy of the, the particles, the or in this case the nuclei. So at high temperatures, the nuclei have high enough kinetic energy to overcome the basically the repulsion. So what actually this does is by having high kinetic energy, the particles are able to overcome the repulsive force, so then they can get close enough to together to, for the strong force to start to act and then bind them together in the in the nuclei which is what you need for fusion to take place but you only get this at high temperatures because that's what gives the particles the high enough kinetic energy so in massive stars nuclei of hydrogen are processed into nuclei of helium so we're looking at some sort of fusion process there and this happens through a series of interactions involving carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen called the CNO cycle. So we want to complete the nuclear equations below that represent the last two reactions in those series. So let's look at the first equation here. So we, what we don't currently know is the relative atomic mass of the oxygen on there's a particle missing on the far right hand side. So the first thing you should think is, well, got your oxygen is decaying into something so you need to pick a radioactively unstable isotope of oxygen so there's two that we know about oxygen 15 and oxygen 16. 16 is the stable form because that's what's in the air around us so if it's going to decay it must be the unstable form so it must be this oxygen 15. So what you can see on the left hand side is you've got a relative the relative atomic mass of 15 and atomic number of 8, and on the right hand side currently what we have is the atomic relative atomic mass of 15 again but the atomic number has gone down. You need to think, well, what kind of decay causes the atomic number to go down? Well there will be two types, you could have either alpha or beta plus, both of those would do that, but because the change is only by 1, that means it's, you know it's not alpha, so it must be beta plus, which means you must produce a positron, which makes sense because if you think about the fact it's producing an electron neutrino, those two have op like opposite lepton numbers, so the lepton number cancels out on both sides, so then you'll still have lepton number being conserved. So that makes sense. So for the second part here, you've got nitrogen interacting with a hydrogen atom, and obviously then producing an alpha particle on the right hand side. So obviously we need to balance the relative atomic masses. So we've got 15 plus 1 on the left, which is a total of 16, and then 4 plus blank on this side. So if we want to get to 16, 16 minus 4 means it must be 12 there. So it would be car carbon 12, so that's the usual isotope of carbon that you come across in different situations. So this question is looking actually at the, the reaction itself, so we've got a balanced equation here. So what we've got is four of the hydrogen atoms on the left, and on the right we've got our alpha particle, two electrons, and then two electron neutrinos. So what we want to do is calculate the energy in mega electron volts that is released. 
So obviously if we're going to work out the energy released, we need to first work out what the change in mass is. So, well, so first of all, let's work this out. So to work out the change in mass, we need to work out the mass of the left-hand side and subtract from it the mass of the right-hand side, and that will give you the change in mass. So change in mass to the whole left-hand side, so we've got four particles, and obviously times to by the value for, or in the terms of u for your four nucleons there, and then obviously that's on the left hand side, so we're going to subtract from it the mass on the right hand side, because we're trying to make the mass difference. So this part it tells you in the question is 4.0050 u, and then we'll just have to subtract from it the electron, but we, we know from looking up on our formula sheet that the mass of an electron is 9.11 10 to the minus 31 but obviously we want that in terms of u so as we had to do that we need to divide it by the value to convert into u so obviously that's going to be 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27 so this part here is all about electrons and obviously we knew that electron neutrinos we can consider having a value of zero u because it have a significant mass here. So that's going because we convert that to u, so we've got the u there. So if we plug this in, so we calculate the numbers, what we find is that the delta m is equal to naught point naught two six five two u. So we've got our change in mass, so what we actually want to calculate is our change in binding energy, so obviously to go about doing that, we take our change in mass, and then we multiply it by the conversion factor, and this will give us an answer of 24.7 mega electron volts.